Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may May allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, Visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster... For your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jesse. I am so happy to be back with you guys. Oh, give me just one second. I have to fix an audio issue. Won't take, but here we go. All fixed. All right, all right. Now, I this is Saturday Slowdown. 
For those of you who are new to Saturday Slowdown, this is where I take time and slow down and discuss a topic that I don't have time to get to in full during the week. So today's topic, who are the Kurds? We hear the word Kurds in the news broadcasts all the time. Now, who are they? Where did they come from? Why don't they have their own country? All these topics are going to be discussed to some extent or other in today's slowdown. So why don't you join me, listen in, and maybe we'll all learn something together. I've already done the research, but I still like to share it. So we're going to get started and started and see if we can't learn something. All right. Just got to get the right soundboard pulled up. Might help. I have. All right. The Kurds go back a long time. Oh boy, do I mean long. Let's take a listen to my first audio clip. Nourished by the headwaters of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, archaeologists believe it was within this cradle of civilization that Kurdish ancestors first pioneered agriculture, animal husbandry, weaving, metalwork, and the making of pottery. Yes, all the way back to the cradle of civilization between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Now that's not something you hear many civilizations say. And most civilizations, not even our own, can claim it. So, the Kurds have a very, very long history. But why don't, you know, I know I'm guilty of this too. Who are the Kurds? Aren't they just like the Australians? Well, yes and no. They are their own people, but they don't have a country. They don't have a country to call their own. That's what they want. The Kurds want to form their own country. Now, there were actually plans for the Kurds to have a country, and I was actually surprised. So... I was actually surprised to hear that because I didn't know that there had ever been plans for the Kurds to have a country of their own. I really didn't. Until I started doing the research for this episode of Saturday Slowdown, I had no clue. I mean, the Kurds go back to about 6 BC, at least as far as medical records. And, or the BCE, for those of you who prefer that. The religion and civilization, civil, the political region, okay, let's start from the top. We have 25 centuries of history to go over. Obviously, I can't go into depth on all of it. Alright, 25 centuries, couple hours, not gonna happen. And I actually have a show on my heels, so I can't just randomly run over today. Because, yes, we have a new show starting today. But that's a whole other story. The Kurds already had a key role in the arts, history, and philosophy fields. And that's from the middle of the 9th century. And a Kurdish lord named Rogzagite founded a town of Aklat, on the banks of Lake Van. Now, Lake Van is something we are going, you're going to hear that name again. Hint, 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 you're going to hear that name again. So, let's get started with who are the Kurds, and we'll talk more about it. 
In Iraq right now, the Sunni militant group ISIS is fighting against the Shiite-run government for control of most of the country. But those aren't the only groups in Iraq. There's a whole other group of people known as the Kurds who have their own security force and their own autonomous region and government. So who are the Kurds and what do we know about them? All right. The Kurds don't just live in Iraq. The Kurdish people actually live across a large continuous block of the Middle East that spreads across Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Oh yeah, you just heard that correctly. Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. How many times have you heard those countries named in news reports? Now, before World War One, yeah, we're going to skip the BC, BCE part for the moment. Traditional Kurdish life was nomadic. It revolved around sheep and goat herding through the Mesopotamian plains. Mesopotamia, you know, you have Tigris, Euphrates River, cradle of civilization. The breakup of the Ottoman Empire after the war created a number of new nation states, but not a separate Kurdistan. But this meant that the Kurds were no longer free to roam wherever they want. They were forced to abandon their seasonal migrations in traditional ways. During the early 20th century, Kurds began to consider the concept of nationalism, a notion that was introduced by the British amid division of traditional Kurdistan among neighboring countries. The 1920 Treaty of Severs, which created the modern states of Iraq, Syria, and Kuwait, was to have included the possibility of a Kurdish state in the region. However, it was never implemented. You heard me. It was never implemented. And after the overthrow of the Turkish monarch by Kemal Ataturk, remember Ataturk? Ataturk Airport in Turkey? Yeah, you're beginning to make the connection. After the overthrow of the Turkish monarchy, Turkey, Iran, and Iraq each agreed not to recognize an independent Kurdish state. The Kurds have received especially harsh treatment at the hands of the Turkish government, the Iraqi government, and I believe the I Iran treats everybody terribly, so let's just get that, get that one off the table. So, the, after the Kurds supported... And in Iraq, the Kurds have faced similar repression, especially after the Kurds supported Iran in the 1980-1988 Iran-Iraq War. Saddam Hussein, most notably, razed villages, attacked people with chemical weapons, and the Kurds rebelled again. Only to be crushed again by Iraqi troops. About 2 million fled to Iran. 5 million currently live in Iraq. The United States has even tried to create a safe haven for the Kurds within Iraq. Imposing, imposing a no-fly zone north of the 36th parallel. But let's learn more about these historic people, because there is a lot more to know. Kurds by religion are Sunni Muslims, but they existed prior to Islam, and they were resistant to the Arab military expansion that took place in the 6th century. Yeah, they're Sunnis. Then why do we get along with them? The Kurds are kind of like aren't quite go along to get along, but they're not out to kill you for your religion either. Now, is this the same audio clip? In order to create the first Sunni caliph all those years ago, Arab forces had to defeat many different Kurdish princes and feudal groups. Like I said, first Sunni caliph. And as most of you are aware, or if you're not aware, very few things happen without bloodshed when it comes to creating power or taking over territory or creating a nation. Very rarely is there not bloodshed somewhere in the middle of it. Now, they are Iranian at heart. They inhabit the mountains. And they center a large part in mountainous areas to the south of Lake Van and Lake Urmaya, a geographical region collectively referred to as Kurdistan. Most Kurds speak Kurmanji or Sorani. 
there's, you know, there's all kinds of hypotheses about antiquity and early Kurdish dynasties go back to the 10th and 12th century. They were resistant to becoming Islam, Islamic, but they had no choice. So they did. I mean, they literally had no choice. All right, sorry, I'm getting distracted by stuff on my desktop here. All right, wrong, wrong clip. Let's play the next clip. During the creation of the 1920 Treaty of Severs, convened after the First World War, when the Ottoman Empire was being carved up, the Kurds promised an independent homeland. The Kurds were promised an independent homeland by the Treaty of Severs. So, I think that's the biggest question on my mind. Why didn't the Kurds get a nation? Now, there's a lot out there on it. The Treaty of Severs was signed on August 10, 1920. In addition to stripping the Ottoman Empire of all its territory off the Anatolian Peninsula, it didn't leave the Turks with very much on the Anatolian Peninsula. And you'll notice that the area, there's an area uh, south of Armenia. It's listed as possible Kurdish territory. This was There was supposed to be a referendum in that region on whether it wanted to remain part of the Ottoman state or if it wanted to become an independent Kurdistan. Now, the Treaty of Severs, if you look at a map, does not reflect modern borders. In fact, never reflected historical borders either. While the Ottoman Empire was willing to sign the treaty, the Turks were not. So literally, now you know why the Turks and the Kurds really don't get along. The Turks can, the Kurds can literally point to the to Turkey and say, you're the reason we don't have our own country. There's a little more to it than that, but we're going to keep it kind of on the surface here, because we don't want to go into 1920s Kurdish-Turkish politics. Mustafa Kemal set up a rival go you know, as it turned out, while the Ottoman Empire was willing to sign the treaty, the Turks were not. In 1920, Mustafa Kemal set up a rival government in Ankara, the current capital of Turkey, and declared that if the Allies wanted to scissor up the Anatolian Peninsula, they'd have to fight to do it. After all, most of the fighting of the First World War involving the Ottoman Empire had not taken place in modern-day Turkey. And the most notable bit that had, Gallipoli, had been a crushing disaster for the Allies. The Allies figured that Kemal now known to us as Ataturk, was bluffing, sent in troops. And a lot, Greece in particular sent in a lot. It wasn't a bluff. The result, another two years of war, now known to historic, referred to by historians as the Turkish War of Independence. At the end of it, the Greeks were forced out, zones of influence were dismantled, Armenia was absorbed altogether, the Ottoman government was overthrown altogether, in a whole, and the Kurdish referendum was cancelled. All this was formalized by the 1923 Treaty of Usan, which formalized the new borders. Turkey had just fought a war in part to avoid losing land to a potential Kurdistan. France and Britain had never at all been interested in the concept of Kurdistan made from lands they already controlled, to con it took until the 1990s for the Kurds to manage to gain part of an autonomous region. That's, and they still do not have their own sovereign state. Now, on paper, Iraqi Kurdistan was autonomous from 1970 on. 
like I said, on paper. In reality, yeah, right. So, like I said, they had one on paper, but it didn't come to pass. All right, there's more we need to know about the Kurds. During the creation of the 1920 Treaty of Severs, convened after the First World War, when the Ottoman Empire was being carved up, the Kurds promised an independent homeland. Later on, Ataturk and Western allies replaced the previous Treaty of Severs with Luzon Treaty in 1923, and the allies abandoned the idea of a Kurdish independent state. So the Kurds were originally in 1920 promised a homeland? In 1923, with the stroke of a pen, any thoughts, hopes, or promises of that went up in smoke. Now, most of us had never heard about Kurds until this happened. Hidden in the shadows of history, resistance against repression became the Kurdish way of life, until atrocities inflicted by a dictator named Saddam Hussein sent shockwaves throughout the world, causing people of every nation to ask, who are the Kurds? Most of us never even looked at who the Kurds were until Saddam Hussein gassed them. All right, I'm looking for an audio clip. Let me see if I got it. Here it is. Got a couple more. I'm still loading audio clips as I go because I had so many on this that I couldn't load them all at once. So you're just going to have to bear with me. Since 1920, the government of these countries in which Kurds reside have done everything in their power to limit or eradicate the Kurdish identity. The world's 30 million Kurds, equivalent to the population of Canada, make up the largest ethnic group in existence without a recognized state of their own. That's right. They're the largest group in existence without a state. So, they are Muslim. Make no mistake. But... They are friendly to, towards the West, despite the fact, despite the fact that the West essentially decided in 1923 not to, basically not, not to go along with it. I mean, really, that's the long and short of it. France and Britain didn't want to give up territory they controlled, and Ataturk was like, nope. All right. We are neither Arabs, nor Turks, and nor Persians. We are Muslims. Yes, they are Muslims. At the end of World War One. The Kurds were finally promised independence, with the dismantling of the Ottoman Empire and the creation of new nation-states. So they were promised their independence, but as we know, it didn't come to pass. The great prophets Nahum, Jonah, Habakkuk, and Daniel are all buried within the vast borders of what came to be known as Kurdistan. Alright, Kurdistan is not officially on your map. You just kind of have to know where to look for it, and if it is there, it's just a superimposed outline. Unless you go online and Google Kurdistan, you will not see it. Alright, let's get do a little more talking, a little less audio playing. I mean, the Kurds have been persecuted by everybody. Seriously. Turkish, now at one point, the Turks and the Kurds were kind of okay with each other. 
and but then nope when the Turks said the Kurds couldn't have their own country and started persecuting them. That was it. I mean, Mir there's so much here. I'm just, you know, there was uprisings ba all the way back to the 1800s with the Kurds wanting their in independence. So, the split. Kurdish society approached the First World War divided, decapitated without a collective plan for its future. In 1915, the British Franco agreements, known as the Sykes Pico forecast, dismem dismemberment of their country. However, the Kurds were in conflict over the destiny of their country. Some were open to the pan Islamist ideology of the S Sultan Caliph, saw the salvation of the Kurdish people in this in a status of cultural administration autonomy within the frame of the Ottoman Empire. Others claiming to take inspiration from the principal nationalities, from ideas of the French Revolution and from President Wilson of the United States, fought for the total independence of Kurdistan. Fast forward to 1918, the split had been accentuated and the Kurds themselves couldn't agree. The independent independence for for, formed a hurried delegation at the Conference of Versailles to present the claims of a Kurdish nation. And I guess they wor it worked because the 1920 treaty had, had something in it. Mustafa Kemal continued to promise creation of a Muslim state of Turks and Kurds. He was openly supported by the Soviets and more discreetly supported by the French and Italians, displeased with the excessive appetites of British co colonism in the region. After victory, the Turkish delegates were to affirm the peace conference at Luzon and say that they spoke in name of the Kurds and t Turkish sister nations. On 24th of July, 1923, a new treaty was signed in context between the Kremlis government of Ankara and the Allied powers. It invalidated the Treaty of Severus without giving any guarantee with respect of the Kurds. It gave the right of annexation of the major part of Kurdistan over to the new Turkish state. Beforehand, in accordance with the French dream, Franco-Turkish agreement of October 20, 1921, France had annexed the Kurdish provinces of Jazeera and Kurdag to Syria, which were placed under its mandate, Iranian Kurdistan, a large part of which was controlled by the Kurdish leader Simko, who lived in a state of near dissidence with regard to the Persian central government. The fate of the Kurdish province of Mosul, where have we heard Mosul before, very rich in petrol remained undecided. The Turks and British Brits claimed it, whilst the population during a consultation organized by the Society of Nations reached a decision to, in a proportion of 718 in favor of an independent Kurdistan state, protesting that the Iraq state wouldn't be able to survive without agriculture and petroleum wealth of its, this province. Great Britain ended up obtaining the annexation of Kurdish territories with Iraq, placed under its mandate from the League of Nations Council. So the Kurds have had more people against them than they have on their side. Sorry for all the wiggling around today. I mean, the Kurds have literally been promised a state, and then with the stroke of a pen, those promises have disappeared. I mean, really. How would you like to know that we're going to get a state, we're going to get a country, we're going to get a place to call our own? Think of it this way. You're going to buy a new house. We're getting a home, a home of our own. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Eleventh hour. Neighbor bulldozes that house and says, "No, this is my property. You can't have it. I bought. I bought it right out from under your nose. I. I got the paper signed before you could. Sorry, mine." And they bulldoze the house. That would be heart wrenching. Now, because of this, there are people in the in a group called the PKK, the Kurdistan Workers Party, who act out against the government of Turkey. 
all these conflicts in the Middle East go way back. You practically need a history degree to start some of them out, sort some of them out. And I have never claimed to you guys to have a history degree. I have a degree, but it ain't in history. I mean, really, it's not. So, how does all this relate to the news? Well, if you've ever listened to one of my regular shows, you know that the U.S. is backing the Kurds in trying to take down Islamic State. Now, Turkey doesn't like the Kurds, the U.S. does. So, we're kind of in the middle of this thing of, okay, we're going to back the Kurds, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just... It is what it is. But we told Turkey, well, we'll keep them on this side of the river. And it hasn't always worked, but they, the government has tried its best. All right. Kurds have played huge roles in things. And I believe, I firmly believe, believe, and I read this and I wish I remembered where, I really do, that the Kurds helped, had a role in the United States ultimately killing Saddam Hussein. Oh yeah. I mean, the Kurds played a role back in, in things all the way back to Alexander the Great. Let's take a listen to this clip. As centuries passed, these tribes would fall to the forces of Alexander the Great at the Battle of Gogamela, and later rise to their zenith as traitors along the legendary Silk Road. Yeah, they were traitors along the legendary Silk Road. They helped people trade. They were in goods, husbandry, taking care of animals, pottery, the arts. All these things helped civilizations develop and move forward. The Kurds like to build things up, not tear them down. I mean, there's a lot of biblical significance in the Kurds. And... It's one of those things, when I keep hearing about them, it's just nutty that they can't have their own country. Because, as I played before and I'll play it again... The world's 30 million Kurds, equivalent to the population of Canada, make up the largest ethnic group in existence without a recognized state of their own. Okay, the entire imagine the entire population of Canada without a country. I mean, come on, just picture that for a minute. 30 million people, and they don't have their own country? What tree are you barking up? They should. The Kurds will learn to do what they must to survive. Does the fact that the Kurds have fought to survive, that's why they fight side by side in many times, many, many times with our troops. All right, give me one second here. I just noticed the time. It is past time, in fact, for our brief commercial break. So we are going to get that queued up. And then we are going to take a commercial break. Got to make the advertisers happy. And I will have more on the Kurds when we come back. Just getting everything queued up. Ghost Kitty is asleep on his paws, I think. You he are you here, Host Kitty? <coughs> yeah, he's here. I just woke him up. He's not happy. We'll get to pushing buttons, Host Kitty.
This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, Visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. You can run away if you wanna You can pretend that this is totally okay if you wanna You can play dead if you wanna Forget what they say if you wanna Tell your way to kill you wanna Alright, so we are back with more about the Kurds. Now, I found an audio clip that I haven't had time to fully prepare but we're going to take a listen to it anyway. It's already slowed down. I'll take the gamble. And this man managed to travel to several areas of several different quote-unquote Kurdistan regions. We're going to take a listen to what he has to say. And uh, I had an Irish passport, and I was able to get into Iran where the majority of the refugees were. And that began this long journey to these various Kurdistans, the Kurdistan of Iran, the Kurdistan of Syria, the Kurdistan of Iraq, and the Kurdistan of Turkey. And during that time, I I found that uh, the Kurds were changing, and where I had seen them and met them first in tents in the mountains, that was the first Kurdish home I slept in, 
in the 15 years, after 15 years, in, in 2005 and 2006, uh, the Kurds are right in the middle of the corridor of power in the green zone. There's a Kurd who's president of Iraq, uh, an unimaginable uh, prospect uh, a few years back, and a Kurd is the foreign minister, the deputy prime minister, and they have other very important portfolios. So I have seen this arc from these refugees in the tents to the presidential palace where Saddam once uh, gave out orders that included the gassing of the Kurds. So what I'd like to do here uh, today is to take you back a little bit on that run, on that arc that I saw, that big change in, in the Kurds. And I'll begin first by showing you some pictures of the current. All right, as this is radio, we cannot look at the pictures. This is taken from a book that this gentleman wrote, and I have not had a chance to read it. But why are the Kurds so important? Well, guess what? One, Turkey doesn't want them to become powerful because they are they do make up a large portion of Turkey. What the history, you know, like I, like we, we said, the Kurds have been put down by everybody and their brother-in-law. Kurds have been attacked by everybody. And if you pull up a map and I've got one pulled up in front of me. Kurdish militia currently in our fight against ISIS has control of lots of areas, including large sections of Turkey. Yeah, you just heard me right, large sections of Turkey. And that's the reason Turkey doesn't want the Kurds to become powerful because then they could find themselves in the middle of a Turkish civil war. I mean, the Kurds have enclaves in Kobani and Afrin. And the Turks Okay. Let's get, let's back up a second. There are three different Turkish groups that we're going to discuss. The Turkish Kurds, Syrian Kurds, Iraqi Kurds. Iraqi Kurds, we're going to use KRG. Kurdish Regional Government. They're the Peshmerga. They're the armed forces. Are they their armed forces? They're dominant Iraqi Kurdish party led by Mossad Barzani. And Turkey's fine with them. They're like, yeah, you're not in our country. You're fighting the Islamic State. We're okay with you guys. Because you're going back to Iraq. Now, the PYD. Democratic Unity Party. And they're, they're aligned with the PKK. Turkish government goes, eh, we're not so happy with you guys. But they are fighting against Daesh or the Islamic State. Now, then we get to the PKK. Kurdistan Workers Party. Led by Abdullah Askalan. Who has been jailed off and on. And the PKK does operate some camps in northern Iraq, and they are aligned with the PYD. For the record, the United States supports the PYD. Now, the PKK has been officially banned by Turkey. You heard it. Banned. They've bombed PKK camps. They've bombed hospitals run by the Kurds. And... The U.S. wants to keep the Kurds on our side, but if Ankara, as in Turkey, continues with the shelling, the Kurds could shift towards Russia. So the U.S. has to 
play, step in and go, come on, Turkey, can you stop shelling these people? Because we don't want them to go over to the Russian side. Now, if you're a frequent listener of my show, you know that Turkey has taken over part of Syria. Not a very large part, mind you, but they have taken over parts of Syria. Why? To better control their borders. Because people were routinely crossing over from Turkey into Syria. Either to join the fight, go from the fight, come to the fight. I mean, whole tons of things. Like I said, the leader of the PKK in Turkey is, last I, I could find, he was still jailed. He is held in solitary confinement, spends much, spends much of his time without any information. I mean, it's one of those things. Kurds are 17% of Iraq's population and an even larger percent of Iran's population. I mean, they, and there's Kurds and other non-Arabs account for 10% of Syria's population. Kurds are found in Jordan, Syria, Egypt, and Lebanon as well. So, like I said, there's a lot of Kurds and... The governments that control the Kurdistan regions like the, the land for one reason or another. In some cases because it's rich in oil. In other region, reasons maybe because uh, it's fertile farmland which is something of a serious need in the Middle East. So, it's one of those things, now there, there have been people in the Kurds that have actually managed to make it into power in various countries. Leila Zana, first female Kurdish representative in Turkey's parliament in 1994, was charged with making separatist speeches and sentenced to 15 years in prison. And she took the oath of loyalty in Turkish as required by law and then added in Kurdish, I shall struggle so that the Kurdish and Turkish peoples may live together in a democratic framework. And that's when shouts of separatist and terrorist erupted and they arrested her. PKK has struggled against the Turkish state for cultural and political rights and self-determination for the Kurds. We do see the PKK as a terrorist group. U.S., the EU, and NATO see PKK as a terrorist group because they do things like car bombing. Now... Remember, I told you, there's more than one Kurdish group here. Tur Kurdish group. The PYD are the Kurds the U.S. are supporting. Alright? Yeah, we definitely need our scorecards here. The PYD, the Turks aren't happy with them, but they kind of go, you stay in your corner, we'll ignore you, you ignore us, and life can continue. Yeah, that's pretty much the situation there. I mean, the Kurds have had a very rough existence. I mean, that's the thing. The Kurds have struggled. What the Kurds want is they want a piece of land to call their own. They want to be able to control and govern themselves. And I don't see why that's a big problem. 
Unfortunately, I'm no politician and I don't control have any say in this. There were there are four in, Kurdish inhabited provinces in Iran, Western Abuj, Abuj, Azerbaijan, Kerman Shah province, Kurdistan province, and Elam province, and there's a total of over six million seven hundred and thirty eight thousand Kurds. Okay. Okay. That's a lot of people. We're living in a country that's not openly hostile to them, but they're not, oh, like I said, Iran doesn't like anybody. In present day, day Iran is Shia. The Kurds are Sunni. Remember this? We're going to have to go back through one of these days and discuss the Shia-Sunni conflict. Maybe I can get an expert to come on with me and help me out with that one. Uh... There have been incidents, of course, you know, Kurds, of course, have suffered long discrimination in, in Iran. And 2008 Amnesty International report said the Kurds have been particular targets of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Kurds' social, political, and cultural rights have been repressed. I mean, it's one of those things. The Kurds have had it rough. Saddam Hussein gassed them. And Iran, of course, executes everybody they choose to. And he was, uh, authorities accused Hassan Fatayan of carrying arms for an illegal organization and sentenced him to several years in prison. He was not, according to Amnesty International, he was not given a fair trial, nor was he permitted to have access to his lawyer. And the Komala, the illegal organization he was accused of associating with, claimed that he left the group a long time ago. Fatih an attempt to appeal, and when he did so, he was sentenced to death for enmity against God. His execution has been condemned by human rights groups and activists internationally. In January 2010, Iran executed a second Kurdish political prisoner, Fasi Yasmani, for enmity against God, like Batayan Yasmani was tortured, and authorities tried to force him to confess, but he refused. He was also denied a fair trial. Now, this is about pretty much SOP, Standard Operating Procedure, for an Iranian court. There's been more political prisoners, like I said. I could go on about Iran and political prisoners, but the subject of this is the Kurds. All right, let's pull up one more thing. The Kurds want what I think all of every, every normal race civilization and society wants. They want to be free. I think I've got the right audio clip pulled up. Let me see. In 1920, the Ottoman Empire fell, which resulted in the Treaty of Sèvres. Okay, we've already covered that. Sorry, didn't mean to take you back in time. I thought I was at the right spot in that audio clip. Obviously, I wasn't. One more shot. If you'd like to know more about the conflict... In One more shot. Hang on. Plus, the Kurds aren't just one united group looking to create an enormous Kurdish nation. They have numerous sub-factions and rifts. When you're talking about the Kurds in Iraq, you're talking about the Kurdistan regional government and their Peshmerga security forces. These are the people currently running the only autonomous region under Kurdish control. They're keeping the Kurds safe, and they have a record of assisting the U.S. with their war efforts in the area. The Peshmerga was the group that captured Saddam Hussein in 2003, and they also captured Osama bin Laden's messenger in 2004, which led to the eventual U.S. capture of Osama bin Laden. Yes, the Kurds have been hugely instrumental in helping us. They are true allies in the region, possibly one of just a few. All right, my time is waning, and I've rattled on. But you have to realize the Kurds are one group of people. They are multiple. Now, we're going to look at just a few more things about the Kurds.
And I'm pulling up articles from a day or so ago, so... Asia Rosman Antar, a fearless 19-year-old Kur Kurdish woman fighter, was killed in Syria fighting ISIS. Many brave Kurdish fighters, men and women, are being killed these days in the slaughter fields of Syria and Iraq. And they're victims of Assad's army, the Turkish army, ISIS, and Russian airstrikes. But also Western chief fleet Amer American betrayal. Oh yeah. What makes this person special? She'd won the nickname of Kurdish Angelina Jolie due to her physical resemblance as a superstar. Some demographic and historical context is necessary to explain why the Kurds are who they are. Like I said, we've already covered the 30 million people. They don't have their own country. Saddam literally killed 5,000, actually five to 6,000 of them in a gas attack in Halabja. Oh yeah. The Kurds are brave. They fought. They have fought for centuries. Fighting has passed on. I mean, like I said, we're backing part of the Kurds, but we're not backing other parts of the Kurds. And this was two days, uh, two days ago. Turkish President Erdogan has today described the ongoing military operations against the Kurdish fortune, forces as the longest operation in history which, with respect to fighting against the Kurdish PKK, saying the attacks will continue both within Turkey and across the borders. Turkey's been fighting the secessionist PKK off and on for decades. Most of the recent conflicts launched by Erdogan in the summer of 2015 after we withdrew, withdrew from the ceasefire to launch a new attack. Fighting against the PKK is chiefly in southeast Tur Turkey, but also northern Iraq. Oh yeah. Like I said, the PKK is the group that says, we want our freedom. We want our independence. So, the Kurds have had a very rough... Existence. Now let's look. Uh, the PKK was founded for for reference, no, 27th of November 1978. It's been involved with armed clashes with Turkish security forces. However, you know, full scale insurgency did not begin until 1984. There, w there's been often on ceasefires. On March 21st, 2013, Askelon announced the end of an armed struggle and ceasefire with peace talks. On July 25th, 2015, the PKK canceled their 2013 ceasefire. Askelon is, I believe, is still currently held in jail. I mean, like I said, these guys, they've tried being polite. In fact, the United States and Iraq have warned Turkey the conflict has particularly affected Turkey's tourism industry and has cost the economic economy of Turkey three hundred to four hundred and fifty billion dollars. I don't understand. Seriously, Erdogan I know you'll never hear this, but Erdogan, or I doubt it. Please set up a region for the Kurds just like Iraq did and give them some independence. Abdullah Askalan, who we've referenced several times, also known uh, as Uncle in Kurdish, was arrested in 1999 with the Turkish National Intelligence Agency with CIA support. He's been sentenced to death under Article 125 of the Turkish Penal Code. And that references formation of armed organization. The sentence was commuted to aggravated life imprisonment when Turkey abolished the death penalty in support of its bid to be a, a member of admitted to the UN. From 1999 until 2009, he was the sole prisoner on Emirali Island in the Sea of Mamara. 
sole prisoner. A prison being run for one man. Yes, you heard me. So, Imrali, he, uh, after his capture, he was the only prisoner on Imrali Island. Although former prisoners at Imrali were transferred to other prisons, more than a thousand Turkish military personnel were stationed on the island to guard him. Did I mention one man, a thousand men? In 2009, Turkish authorities announced that Oskalan would be relocated to a new prison on the island. They were ending his solitary confinement by transferring several other PKK prisoners to Amrali. They said Oskalan would be allowed to see them for 10 hours a week. The new prison was built after the Council of Europe's Committee for Prevention of Torture visited the island and objected to the conditions he was being held in. So, in 2005... European Court of Human Rights ruled that Turkey had violated Articles 3, 5, and 6 of the European Convention of Human Rights by granting Oskalan no effective remedy to appeal his arrest and sentencing him to death without a fair trial. Oskalan had, had, has released statements through his lawyer. In 2006, he called on the PKK to declare a ceasefire and seek peace with Turkey. On May 2010, however, Oskalan said he was abandoning the ongoing dialogue between him and Turkey, saying that this process is no longer meaningful or useful. Turkey ignored his three protocols for negotiation and included, that included A, terms of his own health and security, his release, and a peaceful resolution to the issue, Kurdish issue in Turkey. Though also, he said that his comments should not be act as a call, be misinterpreted as a call for PKK to intensify its armed conflict with the Turkish state. Oskalan has renewed some of his cooperation with the Turkish government in hopes for a peaceful resolution to three decades of conflict. Oskalan tried declaring a ceasefire in 2013. It's one of those things. Every t they'll declare a ceasefire and then somebody will decide, now nah, this ain't working. And then, boom, ceasefire ends. Soon after Oskalan's declaration was read, the functional head of the PKK, Arat Karlalem, responded by promising to implement the ceasefire, stating, everyone should know the PKK is as ready for peace as it is for war. I mean, the PKK is conducting acts against the Turkish state. I get it. You don't like somebody setting off car bombs in downtown Ankara. Come on. I don't want car bombs going off in my hometown either. But I really think if everybody could take a step back, take a deep breath, they might actually get somewhere. I mean, I'm sorry. This fact that these the Kurds are stateless, this a people the size of the population of Canada is without a country, I think in this day and age is absolutely reprehensible. I have no other words for it. I truly have no others. I don't know how else to phrase it, how else to put it. I do have a Kurdish proverb for you. There is a saying among the Kurds, no friends but the mountains. I can see why the Kurds have come up with that saying, no friends but the mountains. Well, guess what? The mountains are the one thing that has never betrayed them. Western powers have betrayed them. They've been betrayed by every country they live in. They've been persecuted. They've been attacked by every country they re reside in. I mean, come on. How many times are you going to be betray betrayed before you 
before you say, I've had it. I mean, really, there's... There's just constant, constant persecution for these people. And all you have to go do is go, go do an internet search. I prefer Bing to Google, but it's one of those things over, you know, there's so much going on in the Middle East. And you've got the Shias versus the Sunnis, and sometimes the Shias versus the Kurds, who, while they are Sunni Islam, they also say they are Kurds. So... I mean, more Muslims are killed in the Middle East by other Muslims. The mass media should take a long look at itself and start to question the House of Islam, Arab Unity, Muslim Brotherhood, and so forth. I'm sorry, they should. What is the House of Islam, Arab Unity, Muslim Brotherhood? Those are questions that we're going to have to wait for another show and another day. So we will have to delve into those another time. I hope you've learned a little bit about the Kurdish people. Like I said, they have their roots way back. They were promised independence. And just as a reminder, here's the list of the countries, once again, that the Kurds reside in. Since 1920, the government of these countries, in which Kurds reside, have done everything in their power to limit or eradicate the Kurdish identity. Okay, grab the long, wrong clip. Let me see if I can find it. I mean, the Kurds reside. I'm looking for the clip that tells me what where countries the Kurds reside, because they are in multiple countries. I think I already cleared it off my board, but we're gonna see if we can pull it up. Nope, same clip I just played. I'm sorry for being just a little bit disorganized. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get on the air today, so I didn't have everything preloaded. And I hate to say it, with as much, many audio clips as I had for this one, it would have taken more than one sound board. I don't know what this file is. Uh, the GSG 9, which is a uh, German special. Okay, that's something totally different. All right, let's play this real quick. We are neither Arabs nor Turks and nor Persians. We are Muslims. The world's 30 million Kurds, equivalent to the population of Canada, make up the largest ethnic group in existence without a recognized state of their own. There is a saying among the Kurds, no friends but the mountains. All right, I'm going to encourage all of you to take a few moments, do a little research, learn more about these, one, these people that have essentially been shunned, stepped on, stomped on by all concerned. And on that note, you know what's coming. I'm out of here!